Today we're going to talk about Axis Zipstream technology and I'm going to show you how to configure it within an Axis camera. So Zipstream is a compression algorithm that's going to look at what's moving within the scene, it's going to retain the detail, and it's going to compress the rest of the image around it. This is going to result in significant savings on your bandwidth and your storage. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the setup feature and we're going to configure Axis Zipstream. So if we go into video stream, under the text overlay feature, I'm going to name the camera. I'm going to include hashtag B. This is going to show me the kilobits of data. Then I'm going to include hashtag R. That's going to show me the frames per second. That's going to be important when we enable dynamic frames per second within Zipstream. So Zipstream works hand in hand with the H.264 stream. So most video management softwares, when they pull the camera into their system, they're gonna pull the H.264 stream. So when it does that and Zipstream is enabled, you're automatically gonna get the benefits of the Zipstream technology. And Zipstream is a camera-based application. So it doesn't matter what video management software you're using, you can take advantage of Zipstream and potentially get up to 50% savings in bandwidth and storage. Now there are some advanced features of Zipstream called Dynamic GOP and Dynamic Frames Per Second. And those features will give you almost up to 80% or even more in savings in bandwidth and storage, depending on how much motion is within the scene. But those features have to be supported by the video management software you're using. Most of the major video management softwares out there today do support these features. So what you see here is pulling the standard H.264 stream with me just sitting here uh, talking to you. We're right around the 900 to 1,000 kilobits of data, depending on how much I'm talking. So what I'll do now is I will leave the scene We'll see how much bit rate is being used. So you can see it's dropped down to the four to five hundred range. So we're right between three, three hundred and four hundred and fifty. So pulling the H.264 stream with me not in the scene, we're right on the three hundred to four hundred fifty range. So what we're going to do now is if I go back under setup. I'm going to video stream, click on zip stream, and I'm going to turn it on high. And this is where you're going to see that we have the standard zip stream functions that can get you about up to 50% savings that don't need to be supported by the video management software. Then here we have the advanced functions. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you zip stream on high. So if I pull the H.264 stream, you're going to see a significant savings in the bandwidth and storage. So the bandwidth now with me sitting here talking to you is right around the 400 to 500 kilobits of data range. That's what it was when I left the scene previously. So if I leave the scene now with Zipstream on, you should see a drastic reduction in the bandwidth and storage. So you can see we're getting all the way down to the, into the 100 range now. That's me not in the scene. And previously, just pulling the H.264 stream with me not in the scene, we were right around the 400 to 500 range. So if I go back into the setup, and I go into video stream, click on zip stream, and now I'm going to turn on the advanced feature called Dynamic GOP. So if I pull the H.264 stream, now with Dynamic GOP and me just sitting here, on Zipstream High, we were around the uh, 450 range, 3 to 450. And if I you know, stop talking, it'll continue to drop down. But if I leave the scene, If 
dynamic GOP on, you can see we're now at the 40 kilobits of data range. So you're getting even more savings now with dynamic GOP. Lastly, Maxis introduced dynamic frames per second. So dynamic frames per second is a feature of Zipstream that as the camera detects no motion within the scene, it's going to drop the frame rate. And then as motion re-enters the scene, the frame rate is going to go back up. So we are right around the 400 to 500 range. Uh, and you can see the frame rate starting to drop as I talk less. But now I'm going to leave the scene. And you're going to see the frame rate drop. all the way down to one, because now there's no motion within the scene. And you can see the kilobits have dropped significantly as well. Now, as I re-enter the scene, frame rate goes back up, as well as the kilobits of data. So at the end of the day, you're going to significantly save on your overall network infrastructure when it comes to the bandwidth and storage that you have to deploy uh, because of the Zipstream technology. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment at the bottom.